the one thing I can say about my journey that I didn't plan for any of this. And in fact, I was quite resistant at, at the beginning. Arod Belisa, thank you so much for joining me on 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you for having me. It's, a, it's wonderful to have you, and it's going to be wonderful to talk about your different entrepreneurial endeavors. A lot of them are social, a lot of them are community. I think that if, we, if I look at the different things that you've done along your career, perhaps besides the, the legal stuff, we're, we're looking at a pretty comprehensive list of activities that are very much involving the community, uh, particularly that of the ecosystem in Israel. So Arod, tell me a little bit about your journey leading all the way up to being, uh, to managing a Deloitte's Catalyst in Israel for startups. Well, I, you know, I guess the, the, the one thing I can say about my journey that I didn't plan for any of this. And I, in fact, I was quite resistant at, at the beginning. Um, it, it, it started, I'd say, WISE started about 10 years ago. I think it was uh, 2011. I was, just, uh, I was just out of the army uh, after three years at uh, 8200. Um, uh, and uh, the, <laughs> uh, it, it, there, was, there was this thing. Facebook was just starting to share... To, to, to let you tag people in, in things. And um, I, I remember that uh, I was uh, very bent on sharing things with people like TED Talks and, and, and stuff like that. So, and, and the thing won't let me, uh, wouldn't let me uh, tag more than six people. So I created a group and hoped that it would have about 30, 40 people that I know and would, uh, um, you know, uh, would would not block me or unfriend me, and it 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 kind of took a life on its of its own. I'd say uh, uh, it, it quickly grew to like a 500, 700 people group uh, uh, that was uh, pretty active at the time. And um, you know, I, I'm not going to walk you through the entire uh, uh, group history because it doesn't really matter. But uh, um, um, it was on that venue that, that uh, a bunch of us have decided to uh, uh, create uh, an event for, for that community. The, I think the, the idea was, uh, um, was originally by uh, 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 the show's uh, friend, Guy Katsovich. Uh, uh, he, you know, he came to us, uh, came to me and to a few other people and said, hey, why don't we uh, have a community event? I thought it was a good idea. You know, we, we did it. It was uh, quite successful. And then I remember one time uh, um, guy uh, uh, paid me a visit and said, hey, I've got this offer to to do this at a uh, at the bar um, <laughs> say every once in two weeks. And my immediate reaction was, that's never going to work. You know, I'm, I'm thankful that he has begged to differ. Uh, but the the, the you know, the, the thing was that I wasn't uh, um, I wasn't really sure that that it would work and that we should do it. And uh, ten years later, uh, I can tell you that I am very happy that I was wrong. Right. And I think, yeah. uh, uh, and, and I think one of the things that uh, uh, since then, and actually even before that, I've, I've kind of characterized my approach is that. Uh, I try to listen and let uh, and, and let myself be wrong. Um, it's it's a hard thing to do, and I know a lot of people you know talk about failures and being wrong. Here, it's it, it wasn't a failure. We were, I, I think, generally speaking, it was a it was a success. But uh, um, I was wrong. I thought that it there's no way it'll work, right. and it and it kind of did, and. What's that? Not kind of. I mean, Wise over over the over the years has had hundreds of events impacting thousands of people. I mean, it, it's a, it's a been a huge success uh, to say the least. Uh, yeah, I, I you know, I uh, 
uh, I, I completely agree, and, and it has, has it has uh, uh, transformed into something that is, is a uh, critical part of my identity. And I'd say that, mm. um, uh, but I always, w- whenever I'm asked about it, I, I always start with the fact that I was. At the beginning, I never thought it would work. And I mean, to this day, I'm really not sure why it still does, but uh, I, I think I'm, uh, we are fortunate uh, um, that, that it still does and that uh, people in Israel are very excited about the things we do and about the events and the content we bring. Um, but, you know, I, I, guess, I guess the first few years at WISE kind of gave me the confidence that I needed in order to do more things or more uh, um, endeavors. And I think that one of the things that changed about me the most is that I kind of realized that if it won't work, it'll be fine. I mean, you know, uh, the, the term we like to use in Israel is, is, is fail fast, fail often. And I think part of my... Uh, um, one of my strategies was, or one of my strategies till this very day is, okay, I mean, fine. If it won't work, it won't work. We'll just, you know, pick up, uh, um, you know, pick up the, uh, the debris and uh, move forward. And I right. think it, it, it has been, uh, um, it has been a, uh, um, a kind of like a cornerstone of, of the way that I, you know, approach uh, uh, new things. And it's not easy. Emotionally, it's not easy for me. I'm a, I, I think I'm a relatively conservative person at, at nature. And, and I keep trying to push myself into new things because, uh, um, you know, because it has proved out to be uh, a, a generally good strategy, I'd say. Right. So, so you once we move past WISE, you've implemented the same mindset into all the different endeavors that you've done. So talk to me a little bit about them and, and how did you bring that mindset to develop these? Well, again, I think, so we, we, we did learn a lot at WISE, all of us, all the people who were involved and all the people who are still involved. We learned so much, so much about anything from operations and making sure that things run on time and you know all the way up to leadership we we incorporated a uh, a nonprofit i'd say in 2012 or something uh, as a as a amuta as an um as an association and you know we, we we when you when you form an association you have to have a board of directors but really when you are a 5 to 10 people operation that really doesn't ma- matter and especially when you you were 22 or 23, I, I I didn't realize what it meant to be a board member, and it didn't really mean anything at the time. But I think as 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 we grew and as uh, uh, I've spent more time doing uh, you know doing uh, the work in the first few years, and then kind of transitioning to ha- to to uh, letting you know to managing. Uh, uh, individuals and uh, uh, what, what is now teams, um, you know, I think uh, I've learned a lot uh, in, in terms of what does it mean to, to manage, what does it mean to lead, uh, and um, in, 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 a, in a way, I think that we kind of grew, or at least the, the people who are now uh, on the board, we kind of grew into the role. Um, and I think that today, if I um, if I uh, think about it, then then um, the, the the thing that, that you know that, that was most impactful is to know how to take a step back and uh, uh, also bring other people in, trust them, delegate effectively, uh, um, work with them in some cases, even mentor them and really letting other people share that uh, uh, thing that that we've created about 10 years ago. 
Right. So it's not just the community that's, that's, you know, the customer base or the people that are using the product or, 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 or leveraging the association and the nonprofits work, but it's also internally the people that are, that are running it. And of course, I'm, I'm assuming that when you were discussing nonprofits and these sorts of associations, um, you need the people there to, first of all, be very in, right? You need to really loop them in. You need to really make it a community, uh, primarily because this is nonprofit work and the motivations for, for volunteering your time at a nonprofit work are very, very different than being a board member of a for-profit startup, perhaps, right? 100%. I think that in a nonprofit, um, you know, the, the internal motivations are almost all you have. I mean, in, in a, in a for-profit organization or in a startup, it's always a mix between the, the money and like the compensation and the, the internal uh, uh, motivation, which is very important. If you want to have an A team, then you definitely need that. It's just that in a nonprofit, that's pretty much all you got. Uh, and um, when you're when you're dealing with volunteers, especially, and I, I think that that the the key idea is to help people find meaning in their work, and that's really not easy. It's not easy for it, for uh, um, you know. It's not easy because uh, um, people have different agendas and they have different personality structures and people need, different people need different levels of guidance and different levels of, of support. Some people are more independent and they just want to go for it. And some people need the guidance. And I think that that, that commitment is, is um, something that, that can manifest itself in, in, in different ways. Um, and it never stops. L let me give you an example uh, uh, yeah. from, from this day and age. Um, corona hit and you know, we had to transition from the, the bars environment and the offline environment to the online environment. And you know, as technical as it sounds, it was also a profound change. And one of the reasons it's such a profound change is not because well, it is because people consume the content online and not in the bar, but it really impacted our volunteers uh, uh, because the DNA of our, our organization was the physical interaction with one another in bars. And it was for, for our, our uh, volunteers and for our staff uh, as much as it was for our audience. Now, right. it, took us, it took us a while to understand how, uh, um, you know, how dramatic the change is. And we are still undergoing a process where we are trying to, to redefine what it means to volunteer at WISE. Now, the, to, to be very honest, uh, and, and I think it, 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 it is, you know, it is crucial to say that uh, while, you know, while we as, as the, the organization's leadership kind of had to step back and think about what we can do differently and how we can re redefine the meaning of being a, a volunteer at once, it, it is, it was, and it will be a team effort and we need all of our volunteers and all of our staff to be committed to this. And if they're not committed, then maybe we're doing something wrong. Um, right. it, 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 and just to finish the thought, um, you know, the, 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 the key issue in, in, in all of this is that, uh, you know, you make mistakes, you, you test something in the field, you make more mistakes, you try to implement yep. it and you, basically try to be honest and transparent enough about it in order to uh, uh, in, in order to um, uh, be successful in order to transition well from one environment to another. A hundred percent. No. And the impact that WISE has had is, is phenomenal. Uh, but you've also taken part in quite in, in a few other activities uh, as a board member, particularly both of the Israel Internet Association, but but even uh, more exciting for me, the uh, Alumni Association for 8200. So talk to me about your activity there and, and what lessons have you brought from WISE to this association in your learnings? 
Well, so I, I, I didn't start off as a board member. I started as the uh, uh, as a uh, newsletter editor, uh, and I, uh, uh, you know, I was I, I, I volunteered there, and I spent a lot of time doing that. About I'd say about two or three years, um, and um, I, 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 and I think for this the the it was a very busy time for me personally with school and work and uh, a few other commitments and whys and uh, same thing. I just decided to go for it and see if it'll work. And uh, uh, I I just really enjoyed uh, um, the journey. And uh, then at some point where I entered the, the board of directors, um, I'd say that uh, uh, I, I did bring a lot of the things I didn't do well at, at WISE. The, all the things that didn't really work well for me or didn't really work well in, in general and all of my missteps, I just tried to learn, learn back from them. And the, 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 the Alumni Association is a much different organization and, and I love it dearly. I'm still very much involved and I keep on wanting to be more and more involved. I love the organization. I think it's a phenomenal platform for, uh, um, to, to make an impact both on our members and our alumni, but also on, on uh, the, the Israeli society. And um, I, I think that, that, you know, one of the things that, that I kind of brought with me is trying to learn how to be a, a good board member, which is, which is a, a, a very tricky thing to do because as a board member, oftentimes you have a kind of like an internal struggle between right. uh, being, you know, you want to be there, you want to get things done, you want to be active, but you have to remember it's not your job. Your job is, as a board member, of course, is to weigh in, is to be strategic, to be thoughtful, to help, to offer help if you can, and also be a part of the conversation. It is, I, I think one of the one of the things that uh, um, you know what, one of the things that I carry on to this very day is um, that a and, and this is something that a friend uh, told me. I think originally it came from uh, Steph Wertheimer, but I don't know him personally, so I can't attest. <laughs> but a, a board member does three things. They, they uh, appoint a CEO, they fire a CEO, and they ask, how can I help? And I think the problem starts when board members in general, not, saying, not necessarily uh, you know, in, in any organization, but the problem is, is where, where board members act as um, executives that's where usually where the problem starts. Now, we didn't have a CEO for a while, for several years, but now we, we do. We have for about the last year and a half. And I think that for me personally, uh, um, it, it kind of uh, was an opportunity to test the, the, my, my ability to be an effective board member in, right. and not to be, in, in, in to be there for the CEO or to support uh, in not to, you know, want to take charge, which is never uh, a good thing. Wow, that's a, that no, that's fascinating. So, uh, what were some of your responsibilities, or what was your experience being a board member? Uh, if you're looking across the board, uh, ironic uh, for these three organizations, what what key insight do you have? to potentially other board members that of how they can really be helpful and, and non clashing because this is a topic that has come one time and time again on this show of what it means to be a supportive and helpful board member versus one that may be clashing or disruptive to the process. So, so I'd love to hear, you know, one or two key insights uh, from your experience. That's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, there's a couple of things. One is the, the, the role, the role of the board, in my mind, is to provide strategic, um, how do you say this, strategic guidance to the executives. It is, and, and I think that 
um, in, in, you know, a, a board can be too involved and it could also be too detached and both things aren't great. It really takes, it takes a very, very, uh, uh, you know, it, it takes being very minded and very thoughtful in order to create the balance between, you know, being too involved and too detached. Right. Um, I, I think that there's a conception, there's a, and just to, to add on that thought, there's a conception that, you know, a board needs to do their work full time. And maybe in a, in a, you know, Fortune 500 company, ha they, they have to be, you know, doing their job, you know, con like, uh, uh, as a, as a full-time gig. Maybe, I don't know. I've never been on a Fortune 500 board. Uh, but, uh, uh, but I think that from my experience, the, the key issue is to work with your executives to strike the right balance. There's no one answer. It really depends on what your executives need. So that's one thing. The striking the right balance between uh, uh, being too much involved and not being involved at all. Uh, the, the second thing is, um, as a board member, not necessarily as a board, but as a board member, uh, and, and this is going to sound very cliche, but I, I, I still think it's it's incredibly important, it's crafting a good and helpful relationship with the CEO and with his leadership team. And the key to crafting a good relationship is to show that you're you know, you're there, you're active, you're, you, you're interested, you're willing to put in the time, but you're right. not there to step on their toes. At a certain time, you have to be able to take a step back and say, I'm, I've said my piece, I'm not going to get too involved. And, and, you know, I've done this, I, I, I was wrong at this many times. I have over kind of stepped my boundaries as a board member. I have been too involved and sometimes I've been too detached. And to be very honest, I am still trying to figure out what's the correct word for, what's, sorry, what's the correct balance for each right. board that I'm in. And the last thing, the last insight, if you want to call it, uh, is um, different boards have different dynamics. And as to be an effective board member, you have to be able to read those dynamics right. and, and take and kind of choose what role you want to play. Now, right. a, a, a good friend once told me that a person needs to be, needs to know when they are in charge and when they are you know, followers. In, or the way he said it was, it's typical to Israel. A person needs to know when he's a commander or a soldier. Yeah, uh, and and I think it's it's incredibly important, especially for for. And it's actually easier for people who sit on 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 several boards. But the the idea is is that you you know different boards have different dynamics, and they tend to have different levels of conversation. And I think that. You want to decide how active and in what ways you can be and what is your role on, on that board. And I'll give one example. Uh, in uh, my role in the, in, in, in the group dynamic in the uh, Internet Association is profoundly different than what it is or, or in the Alumni Association in the sense that there are things, for example, in the in the uh, um, in the organization's uh, activities that I I don't have a lot of input. For example, there's a lot of uh, uh, tactical issues that that have to do with how do we make sure that that the nation servers are uh, uh, are kept afloat. Honestly, right. nothing. I, I have nothing to say about this. So, yeah. right.
No, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And Arada, I, I really want to thank you for, for shining light for me and for everybody else that's listening about the responsibilities of a board member. And uh, and more importantly, the, the the positive ways to make a positive impact on a board. And I think that it's uh, it, 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 I'm excited to, to take part in these activities myself one day. And then I'm definitely going to take a lot of these lessons to heart. So thank you for being generous with your time and sharing that with me. Uh, before we go our road, uh, I'd love to ask you the most important question, which is three words that you would use to describe yourself. Hmm. Wow. I'd say optimistic, conservative, and thoughtful. I love that. And I think that it's a uh, going by, by what we discussed today about your different responsibilities. That's exactly what, what you're, what you're exerting. So, so thank you for the inspiration for that and uh, stay safe and stay healthy and best of luck with all these amazing, amazing communities. Thank you for having me. And as everybody says, it's all about the people. So thanks everybody. Thank you for having me and thanks everybody for being a part of the ride.